Welcome back to the channel guys and today's episode is for you GR Yaris and Corolla owners and it is about the pesky turbo oil drain pipe, the problems it can cause you or maybe it already has. Today I will run through all the potential OEM and aftermarket options to upgrade slash fix it and how much they cost. Because the other week I came across this exact same problem of the cracked turbo oil drain pipe and let's be real, no one wants to have their car on jack stands unless they're fitting aftermarket parts. Let's jump right in. Let's start with what causes the oil drain pipe to crack. One part is the design of it. As you can see on this one here, there is no actual flex joint in it. Some cars that run turbos actually have a little bumpy flex joint in them that allows the pipe to have some sort of marginal movement. The other one is aftermarket modifications such as the downpipe. I myself have had one fitted and some models, especially the one that I had fitted, does not come with a flex joint in the downpipe. So obviously no flex joint, doesn't allow any movement. So all the vibration from the exhaust, engine, gearbox, everything just goes through the car and this pipe, which would cause it to crack. So this is what you can do to fix or prevent it from happening, which leads me to option one, which is a fix. So if your oil drain pipe does crack, which it most likely will down the base here, which is where it bolts onto the block, mine cracked there and everyone else's who I've researched into has cracked in the exact same spot. Simply pull it off, Give it to someone you know or a boiler maker or fabricator and they will braze it or weld it back on probably for a six pack or a carton of piss it is as simple as that chuck it back on and you're back on the road from factory there is foam that goes over the part that bolts onto the block so you will need to strip that away or if you're pulling the car apart just pull it off you're probably thinking why not just call toyota and buy a new one well when mine cracked i called toyota and i said hey come a new one they're like yes you can in a month and obviously if your car is a daily like mine is you do not want to wait that long which leads me to option two, which is a preventative or a fix. If your oil drain pipe is cracked, obviously weld it back on and cut it down the center. Probably thinking, why the fuck would I do that? Well, once you've cut it down the center, get yourself some oil hose from your part shop, car shop, wherever you get it from in your area and turn it into this, which is about as long as my pinky and has two metal hose clamps on it. You will then use this device to join the oil pipe back together and you can slap it back on your car and you're back on the road. What this does is allows the pipe to have some movement to avoid it from cracking down the bottom. Now this can be a preventative if yours hasn't cracked yet or if it has cracked, fix it and then do this. Option three, which is similar to what we spoke about in option one, which is just buy another OEM pipe. Now they are around 147 Australian dollars without gaskets. I think an extra 20 or $30 to get gaskets with it. Pull off your broken one and chuck on your new one. Now, this is probably similar to option one, except with option one, you don't know how long it's gonna last. Same with this one. It may last 100 Ks, 1000 Ks, a million fucking kilometers. You don't know. And obviously, if you're like me, you don't want the anxiety of driving around your car, worried that's gonna crack again. Which leads me to option four, which I would recommend, but it does have some cons. Get your factory turbo oil drain pipe and cut it up. That's right, we're cutting shit up. What you wanna do is get it and cut it off at both ends. The end that goes onto the turbo and the one that goes on to the engine block. You want to go to your part shop, again, wherever you go to in your area, and you want to get two weld on dash 10 AN fittings. Now with the part that goes on the turbo, simply weld it on in the center where you cut it off from, simple as that. But with the one that goes onto the block, you want to weld it so it's slightly off center, slightly higher, so that gives you clearance to bolt this back onto the block, because otherwise, it won't go on and then you're fucked. You're probably thinking, ah, oh, that's hectic. Now what do I do? Well, you head down to the same shop where you got your Dash 10 weld on fittings and you get one of these puppies made up. What this is, is Dash 10 higher pressure oil hose. Basically it comes with a nine degree bend and a small straight. Now, normal AN fittings will not fit or work because the girth of them is, well, too girthy and it will not fit. It plain out, will not fit. I fucked around with this. This is my, I don't know, test dummy. I was there for hours, it did not fit which I'll lead to the cons with this one in a moment. You're probably thinking, Jonesy, that's fantastic. I've got this pipe, now what do I do with it? In which fucking way does it go? That is a fantastic question. Took me hours to work out after looking at photos from Lamb Speed Racing's old kit and messing around on the car on the ground. Turbo side, nine degree bend, voila. Then obviously the remaining bit that goes on the block onto the straight end, and it will essentially look something like that, that, like this. Very similar to the OEM pipe. Now, there is a con, but before I tell you what it is, I'll tell you how much all of this costs. The weld on a Dash 10 AN fittings are around $20 each, and this pipe itself is not fucking cheap. It cost me around 
40 bucks, 100 bucks. So you're looking around 190 to 200 dollars to do this. Yeah. Option five. Option five is very similar to option four, except you're only changing one piece, and that is the part that bolts onto the engine block. This you get from Lamb Speed Racing, and the advantage with this is it's billet. Ooh so it's lighter, and you get to say you have some sort of billet thing on your car, and it's also good for aftermarket turbo upgrades. And the other thing is an O-ring, not a gasket. But it is more expensive, so instead of costing you $190, it will cost you $270, as this fine little piece here is $110 fucking dollars. Is it worth it? I don't know. Now, the con, dun dun, is if you're trying to do it how I did it, we're just trying to put it on and change it without pulling anything off the car, it won't work. Now, in saying that, I did spend quite a long time trying to get it to work and some frustrations. Oh, I might, oh, fuck. And this was all done on the ground on jack stands. Now, if you have a hoist, you have more space, more room, might be a different story. But from my experience, you have to pull the CV joint out on the driver's side and a little bracket that holds it in as it impedes you from getting the bolt in. I've tried both ones, both options, and this one's fine, but the O-ring keeps falling out. And obviously if all that shit is out of the way, you can just slide it on. That and the transfer case is also in the way when it comes to this part. Again, if I spent longer, maybe I might've got it on, but it's just, it's a fuck around. I, I would recommend just pulling your CV joint off out and putting this on. These are the five options that I've come to through my research to fix, prevent, or upgrade your OEM turbo oil drain pipe. Let me know what you think in the comments or if you've tried other options, if you've tried these options, or if there's something I don't know about, you're probably thinking, well, what about just a pure aftermarket upgrade? Well, this is as pure aftermarket -y as you're gonna get, as I've spoken to the man at Lamb Speed Racing himself, and he said he cannot make these or get them. I'm speaking to some people to try and get some of these made in billet. But honestly, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think it's worth the money. I don't really see it. Obviously, you've got an aftermarket turbo, different story. Uh, but yeah, for the factory stuff, just, just do this. It's cheap, it's simple. And no one wants to fucking spend lots of money on stuff you don't have to. Because if you think about it, this is a very boring upgrade. If you compare it to turbos, coilovers, sequential gearboxes, anything you want. Anyway, that's all from me. I really hope this was useful to you and helps you to stay on the road and not break your Yaris or Corolla. And episode three will be out soon. I've been putting this thing on the dyno, going the drags, it's all happening. And then afterwards, I'll be modifying it even more. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.